so now we're going to talk about my favorite ride at Six Flags Great America, which is Yankee Clipper. Uh, but Logger's Run is its sister ride. Uh, they're both called the Flumes. It's just what they're called. Uh, Arrow Ride, original with the park, 1976. So, let's talk about it. Uh, this is the first ride I ever operated. I hated it. Uh, because pretty much all you do is stand and watch boats go by. Um, or when you're in the station, you walk on the turntable and do nothing. Or you uh, group people into the boats. So it can get pretty tedious and boring. Uh, but, so, you can clip or log to run. There's uh, four positions. There's operator, unload, and they stand at the... Uh, where the boats enter the station, welcome guests back, get them off the ride. Then there are two other positions that always must be staffed when the ride is running. And that's chutes and second lift. And so these right here, part where you go down, that's the chutes. So one person stands here, one person stands here. And um, loggers run, they stand there and there. Basically your job at second lift is you... Uh, Technically, you're supposed to look at all the boats as they come by and make sure none of the wheels have fallen off. That's your technical job. Uh, shoots, you pretty much just stand there and you make sure none of the boats get stuck on the run out. And uh, so it has two, two shoots, but only one is used. Because at the California park, a long time ago, um, a boat got jammed at the end of the run out, right where they merge. And the operator didn't see it, and so another boat came down and uh, landed on top of that boat. And uh, didn't turn out so well for those people riding. But we'll uh, talk about the panel here. So this is not the original panel. Six Legs redid this ride at some point. Control power. Rides on. Automatic mode. Um, so anytime a ride step was pressed, the ride would automatically switch to manual mode. And the reason for that is uh, if there is ever a boat on first lift, so this is second lift. First lift is the lift right outside the station. And uh, if there was ever a downtime situation and there was a boat on the first lift, you were supposed to jog it over. And I've actually got a video. This is uh, that's how you get over there from Clipper. You walk over, walk up the stairs, and then there's a panel on the right over here. And the button's got on there uh, control power. Actually, that might be the manual mode or automatic mode light because I think it starts flashing when I push this button. Uh, this is the this is a right step right here. And so, and this button right here is to jog the first lift, and jog just means uh, to run it. So I'm going to push and hold it, and you see that they uh, go over it. The reason you do that is not good to let boats just sit on the belts. This is disgusting. And the, uh, the person whose job that was... When uh, you're running with four people, is the unload person would go out and jog the lift. So turntable jog, that just runs the turntable at the slowest speed, really slow. And so uh, the minimum number of boats you can have is 12, and 12 boats fits perfectly in the station. So uh, during the season when the ride uh, is open, or even when it's closed. There will always be 12 boats in the station. Uh, additional boats are stored in the boat pond. So that's Clippers right there. They're right outside the station. That's Loggers right there. You can see a log floating out there. And uh, so if, yeah, the minimum was 12. And the maximum amount of boats you could run with four people is 21. If you had 22 or more, I think we only have 25 25 boats left on each, but the, the most I ever saw them put on was 20. Usually, uh, 
these days the flumes aren't that high of a priority. They usually never get to all 21 boats by the time the ride closes. But uh, the thing was, uh, depending on how many boats you had, you had to adjust the turntable speed. So the more boats you had on there, the faster the turntable spun. Because you didn't want the turntable to go too slow. Because there's some photo eyes right at the entrance of the station. And if a boat blocks those photo eyes for more than 10 seconds, the ride shuts down. Uh, this right here, auto manual. So they could pop it up into manual. Uh, maintenance enable. So the way you'd start up the ride is there are three panels that have to be used together to start the ride up. I think I've got a picture of it. Give me a second here. And so this one's at second lift, and this one's at shoots. And what you have to do is both of these positions have a ride start. And so all three people, the person at second lift, person at shoots, and then the person at operator, would press and hold the ride start for 10 seconds. And after that 10 seconds was up, the ride would start. Uh, so this right here, shoot manual enable. is up at shoots, you had buttons that you could use to manually open the brakes. And we'll talk about the brakes in a second. But uh, this was only ever used by maintenance because you really didn't want to manually open uh, open shoot gates because uh, there's probably a reason why they uh, are closed and that's because there's a boat stuck. Trouble. This ride uh, went down a lot. Had a lot of trouble lights. And there are two different type, type of trouble lights. So there's a trouble light that causes a ride stop and a trouble light that causes an e-stop. Controller over temperature. So there's uh, the room with the uh, electronics and the computer in it, all that right here. Uh, if it got too hot in there, this light would start blinking and you're supposed to call maintenance. And when this happened, they would go and turn on a fan to try and cool down the room. And that was it station stop that would uh, stop the turntable. Uh, if, after you press the station stop, if you want to start it again, you press the right start and that would start the turntable. This is how you clear errors with this key switch here. So, similar to Rapids, ride stop, there are three brakes on each flume. Brake one is down at the base of the second lift, so there aren't too many boats on the second lift. You just got to remember this ride's 44 years old. Uh, then brake two is right here, where the chutes are, and then brake three is right here in front of the operator. So uh, brake two, there could only be one boat in line to go down the chutes at a time. So brake two would make sure there's only bo one boat in here, and brake three would hold the boat until uh, the boat in front of it had gotten all the way out of the run out, about right here is where the sensor is. So after the boat passes through that, the uh, third brake will open, the boat will come down, This then it'll close, this brake will open, let another boat in, and that'll close. And it repeats. And so uh, ride stop will stop the turntable, lift one, lift two, and it'll close all the brakes. But the water will stay running. E-stop does all that, and then it cuts power to the ride. So the, the ride will drain, and it all drains into this pond. And I don't recommend you drink this water, because it's pretty gross. Uh, so, like I was saying at the unload position, there's a ride stop, and this was actually added after, uh, after that little incident where uh, the boats crashed into each other because they wanted someone who had uh, visibility of the end of the runout to have a stop button. And something else interesting was, uh, standard procedure was if you got your foot stuck or you fell in or something and you couldn't reach the button, you were supposed to instruct a guest to push it. That was actually in the manual. Uh, right here, 
This is the A phone. This is very critical at this ride. It's how you communicate with the people up top. And up top are the people that are standing at chutes and second lift. And so your job as the operator, you, you wouldn't really stay by this panel. You were basically a grouper. You would group people together and put them on the ride. And then if uh, you needed to adjust the turntable speed or something like that, stop the turntable, then you would walk over here and do that. But uh, going back to the, these uh, panels, control on, manual, auto, uh, treble light, and then lower belt jog, upper belt jog. Second lift is divided into two belts. I don't know if I picture that. But it's divided into two belts. And so you can, uh, unlike first lift, where if there was a downtime you jogged them over, this one you did not. Uh, only maintenance ever used these. And uh, actually, so this is what the panel originally looked like. And the difference is this up here. And that's the uh, RPM of the turntable. And so one of the more difficult things about this ride, when it had that, was uh, part of the test is you had to memorize what um, number to set that at, depending on how many boats you had. And so they eventually changed that and put these on here. And it wasn't a single speed with these. It's not like one, two, three. It was you just would turn this to raise, and it would keep speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, and then it would turn to this one. And then it would speed up, speed up, speed up, and then it would go to this one. And when you uh, turn it all the way to the max, the turntable moved quite quickly. Quite quickly. So, uh, talked about starting up the ride in the morning. You press the uh, three ride starts. But before that, maintenance has to turn on the pumps. And they use that. They use this panel right here. It's a terrible picture. Here we go. Um... So there's two pumps on the right. There's the lower pumps and the upper pumps. Uh, so this is the high pump, start stop. And the high pump dumps water out up here. And the low pump uh, dumps water out over here. So the high pump water flows down here into the station. That's what, and then it drains down here. And then the lower pump dumps water out here onto this trough and it drains down here. And the pumps are located about right here on this side of the pond. And so uh, going back to adding and removing boats, that's, see that's the boat pond right there. So this is the gate that you used to uh, add or remove boats. So it was divided into two parts. And if you wanted to add a boat, you would open both of these gates inward and then you throw them on. If you wanted to remove a boat, you would push this gate out so it blocks first lift, and then you pull this one in. And as the boats came by, you had to grab onto the front of it and guide it in here. Because if you just let it run into this gate right here, a wheel could get stuck in it. And then uh, it was a major pain because you've got tons of water flowing against it, and you're trying to unjam a boat right here. So this was, this was pretty difficult, especially if you were a smaller person. We usually didn't let girls do this. You kind of had to have some strength. And then another difficult part was to close it. This one was easy because it was always facing in. So you just latch it in here. Uh, this rope. So when you wanted to close the gate, you had to pull on this rope. And that's how you close the gate. But the thing is, you've got all this water rushing and pushing against this gate. So you had to uh, battle the forces of the water to try and get this gate closed. So that was another difficult part. You had to have some strength. And this floor is covered in mold and algae and stuff that grows in this water and so it's super slippery so it was not that uncommon for people to fall in but uh, speaking of adding and removing boats let's take a look actually i think i got a different one that's better My shoes were in the way on that one. So uh, you take off your shoes, you put on these boots, they're called waders, 
then you throw on a life vest, and you jump in. And, uh, one of the, my favorite parts was when you put on the boots, and there was a spider in there or something. Or there was a hole in a boot, and now your pants are completely soaked. So, you can see here, I'm going to open up the gate, because we're adding boats on, and there's already 12 on, remember. The ride's running. Uh, you would put boats on after maintenance had done all their checks, and you would start it up the right. So you see, you just guided on. Adding them on, adding was pretty easy. You just had to make sure you didn't put them on backwards. Uh, that happened once in 2011, and they used the crane to remove it. And it also happened once in 76. And when that happened, the guy just let it go around, and it it, it was fine. Didn't matter. Oh shit! That's not what I meant to do. So this boat's gonna get in the way. But you get the boat, the point. Figure out how many boats you're gonna add. Uh, usually these days you just put them all on because they don't have 21 anyway. And uh, you also had to keep the boats kind of away from you, because you didn't want one to come and accidentally go on in the wrong direction. So you see, it was kind of an art. You had to turn it to the right. Oh, see, I didn't do it that great that time. If you do it right, it just glides right in. Let's see if I do this one better. And you also had to watch for boats coming out of the station, because you didn't want to throw bump a boat into each other. Oh, see that one? I did a little bit better. Still not perfect. See if I did that one alright. See that? Uh, still hit the wall, but that's a little bit better. You get better at it as as uh, time goes on. And you can hear uh, radio traffic from my radio. So, see, boats are still coming out of the station, so you gotta keep an eye on that. I see that this boat is going backwards towards there, so I'm trying to kind of get, trying to get over there <laughs> before it slides on there. They uh, they're not too heavy when they're in here. It's heavy when you're trying to pull them off, but uh, putting them on is not too bad. And so this ride was a lot of fun. I didn't like being a team member there, but I enjoyed being the leader supervisor, because I liked riding it, I liked putting the boats on, I liked uh, being able to jog the first lift during downtimes. Oh, that one was perfect. That one was perfect. See, I, I, you get better as you go on. I think that was the first time I'd done it in like two years. See another boat coming, hold this one back, and then once it passes, you throw it on. Alright, so there must be uh, 21 on there now, because I'm not putting this one, either that or these are out of service, like uh, full of water, missing a wheel or something. So you close up the gate, you lock it, there's a couple latches you throw on it. And you gotta make sure you properly latch it because you don't want it to come undone during while the ride's open because then people will drift in. And there's a, there's a video of that happening at uh, Yankee Clipper once, I think in uh, 2008. And those boats are disgusting, so I'm trying to wash off my hands. Oh, there's more than this place. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, I guess I'm just moving the boats over here. There, uh, there's some wires in here. I think that's uh, one of the clips, so you can uh, kind of separate boats. But you see, uh, back when it first opened, there were a lot more boats. The boat pond will never look like that today. Maybe half these amount of boats, because you can see there wasn't even enough room. They had to, they had to pile them offshore.
the view from the top. So there you can see uh, that's break two right there. It's just two gates that close. Uh, these right here, these are the photo eyes. So that's what tells the computer when, uh, when something crosses it, it knows that that was a boat that went by. And you can see uh, the second chute is welded shut, but water still goes down it because uh, that's how it was designed. It was water to go down here, and you don't want to mess with the flow of the water. And uh, the way it used to work was uh, there was a gate kind of like this, but it could move from side to side, and it would alternate each time a boat passed. See, this is an arrow. Uh, this is the uh, the room that they do maintenance on boats on. So there's a little crane uh, that comes out of this room towards the the boat pond, and that's how they lift them out. Who knows what that is? Very vintage. Uh, a lot of the boats don't have these on them anymore. But uh, so clippers high pump and loggers low pump are right next to each other. One of the so the one of the pump panels is over here on this building, and then the other one is all the way over here because the other set of pumps is right here. That's what these are. So that's the loggers upper and the clipper lower are these right here. And so uh, the way you got up there, I'll show you loggers run. Is you walk out the station. On this side, cross underneath the lift, walk around this way uh, towards the picnic grove. Then you get to this fence. You walk along along this fence line over here, and then you climb up the stairs. Uh, so there's stairs on the chutes, but you're not allowed to use them. I believe that due to the steepness of them, OSHA doesn't allow that. Maintenance still climbs these, but uh, team members are never allowed to uh, walk up or down the chutes catwalk. Unless, of course, the ride is collapsing or something like that. Yeah, more pictures from inside the uh, the boat pair shop. There's a bunch of spare parts. I'm not sure exactly what that's for. This is the uh, all the electrical stuff for the ride. I'm not sure if this is uh, original from 76, but it might be. I, uh, I haven't seen these companies at any other rides, so I'm assuming that these are original. Uh, this was the uh, the manual for the ride. Let's rotate this. This is kind of cool. See, this is Air Development Company from Marriott Inc. in Gurney, Illinois. You can see, December 19th, 1974. Loom rides number one and number two. This is the, uh, must be for the electrical stuff. And you know, back down, back then. Didn't really have computers, so you had to write everything down. Uh, this is the ride's computer. So it'll tell you the error number. If there's a, a status, that's where that'll show up. Now, I've seen this on Giant Trap too. But I moved that out of the way. And you can see you can control different parts. So you can check the status of break one, the main operator panel, all this sort of stuff. Uh, I don't have a picture of the screen, but there is a screen where it shows like an overview of the ride, and it's cool because it's got like a little animation of water flowing through the chutes. Let's see what this is. God, I love water so much. <laughs> all right. Uh, maintenance mode. This is the uh, second lift panel. I believe this is on... Yeah, this is Clipper. Uh, so this is the panel at the base of second lift. This is the manually open break one. Got a ride stop there. Let's see what this is. Okay, so uh, this is me walking along the logger chute. 
And the thing, or a logger's uh, trough. And the thing with this is, so to clipper you could walk along the entire lower trough to get to the stairs. But loggers, uh, once you get to a certain point, it ended. So we didn't really use this uh, that path, but I wanted to. And uh, so you can see this is pre-opening. I'm not sure what's going on. But so these boats are uh, backed up at break one at the base of second lift on clipper. And these boats are backed up at the base of the lift on loggers. This break one is closed. And so this is how you walk over the to second lift. Walk along this path. That's break one right there. You can see it's closed. It, it was almost always open. Uh, so the rule was you could only have, I think it was four, six, eight was the rule. And what that means is you could only have four boats at once on second lift. Because it was bad for the lift to have too many boats on there. You could only have eight boats maximum up on the upper trough, which is up here. And you can only have six boats backed up at break two. And if you had more than any of those numbers, you're supposed to press the ride stop. So this break is supposed to control the flow of boats going on there, so there shouldn't be more than four on at once. But it was always open. It was very rare that it would close, because usually the boats would be spaced out enough anyway. Because uh, it's designed to run like 30 boats, and we only ever ran 20. That's the hardware for the break. You can see that's where the water drains down there. Uh, these right here, these are the anti-rollbacks. So that's what stops the boat. If the, the belt were to break or something, that's what stops the boat from rolling all the way back down. These are the photo eyes. And you climb this dinky, dinky, dinky staircase up. And you hope that 44 years of rust does not collapse that day that you're climbing up. It's a morning test ride. I really like the strike because it's very relaxing and then a very thrilling 60 foot drop. So this is what this uh, stuff looks like without the water in it. Uh, these are the chute stairs I was talking about, you're not allowed to climb them. Uh, this is the run out. So the difference between loggers and clippers, clippers is called a hydro flume and clippers got this little bunny hop at the base of the chutes. Loggers does not have this. You can see it on the other side too. So when the boats come down it gets this little pop of air time. I think there's a jet that shoots up from here too. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Uh, and a reason we uh, you don't want people standing on clippers because this is kind of low and they could definitely hit their head if they were standing up uh, going underneath the first lift. Another view this is the other chute hasn't been touched in forever. This is the other chute. Uh, see, this is loggers, so it doesn't have that little bump. It just goes straight out. You can see there's a gate uh, that stops boats from potentially f going in there in the second uh, second chute. Everything's welded shut. They're never using that second chute again. Uh, this is at the base. And loggers got the uh, the double down. Here's some boats in the pond after the ride had drained. See the annual rollbacks on, uh, on the first lift. Uh, this is the door that the crane comes out of. That's where you hang up your life vests, uh, rings and stuff if someone falls in. It's a neat picture. Now this is what loggers ride stop looks like at uh, the unload position. This is an old vintage phone I found behind uh, the dolphin show. This is probably original with the park. Didn't work. Did not work. Uh, this is in the pump room. So Roaring Rapids shares the same pump room. I believe this is for the dolphin pool. Right here. It was turned off. Uh, so this is a, a path you weren't supposed to take. OSHA told them that uh, the bridges that go to and from this path. Oh my god. A lot Get of wild. Way, you cunt. Oh, a lot of uh, wildlife at the flumes.
you felt more with nature when you were working there. That's for sure. Another test writing video. Bear with me here. Diagram. If you ever want to uh, make your own model boat, here's the measurements. Of course, designed by Arrow. I think this, uh, yep. These are the grease boards, so they kind of write down when they, uh, when they uh, maintain stuff, you know, put grease on, that kind of stuff. So Very true. Very true. This is cool. This is back when it first opened when they used to not care about stuff like this. And look how nice the films used to look. I've always said, you know what? How about instead of putting in a uh, carnival ride that you can ride at the Lake County Fair, that's a giant loop. How about we repaint the flumes? Or how about we do some fiberglass work? Because let me tell you, up here, about right here, there's a huge leak. Huge leak. It's been there for years, ever since 2012, at least. Uh, speaking of 2012, so uh, I talked about there's a, you could run four people. If There's also a fifth position. That's called the load position. And according to the SOP, their sole job is to stand by a boat and indicate with the with a number of fingers to the operator how many seats are left in that boat. And you can only put five in a boat these days. Back in the day, it was just however many you could fit. I talked to a guy who worked there back in the day, the guy who put the boat on backwards in 76, and he said their top score was nine. And they would just squeeze people in there. And I used to do that too. On busier days, people, I don't want to ride with anyone else. Well, you can uh, you can go ahead and uh, sit down, and I'm going to put someone else in there, and if you don't like it, you can get off the ride and someone else will take your spot. How about that? Huh? Or a group of ten would come down and be like, we all want our own, we all want our own boat. Yeah, no. You are not all riding separately in separate boats. Uh, these are some more switches for the pumps. Vacuum pressure. Uh, these are the pumps. So lower lake. <clears throat> I was talking about this. And uh, rapids. So these are some pretty massive pumps. There's one of the fans they turn on if things get too hot. Very innovations in Six Flags' DNA. That's their slogan. And uh, the reason there's netting up here is because birds like to make nests up here, and then they poop on all the guests getting on the ride. So, uh, some downtimes here. The uh, photo eye, right here, 2017, for whatever reason, it stopped working properly. So about every 20 minutes the ride would go down, and they'd come out and they'd try and realign the photo eyes. And then we'd go down again 20 minutes later, and we'd keep repeating that cycle all day for weeks. So usually when the ride goes down, it's because there's an issue with the photo eye. I, I remember once, actually, I, I caused the downtime when I first started working there. One of my first days, because I was uh, figuring out how the ride worked. And so, I can't really see it, but you, it shoots you standing over here. And uh, the photo eye, that's, that's where it looks into. And the, there's another one in the, on this side over here. And so I realized if I put my hand in front of it, this uh, brake would stay open. And then when I took my hand away, it would close. And so I was doing that for a little while. But then I put my hand in front of it for a little too long. And that caused the ride to go down. But luckily, the maintenance guys were uh, not the brightest. And so they read the trouble light as brake one. And brake one's at the base of the lift. Not break three, which is the one that I uh, that I was messing with, and like loggers or uh, 
rapids I talked about, this is the critical load point. So if a boat reaches here, people are still standing, you uh, stop, the, stop the turntable. And you would hope the boat would stop. <laughs> because uh, they were very slippery, especially at Clipper. When a boat would come in um, to the station, I don't know if I have a better picture, but it would come in and it would just slide until it hit another boat. And a lot of times if you put some heavy people on a boat, it would not rotate with the turntable. It would just sit there in place because the turntable couldn't get a good enough grip and uh, the two 300 pound people sitting in the boat. And so usually you just had to wait for other boats to come by behind it and push it, or you had to uh, push it yourself. And uh, so one of the reasons I really like this ride is it's pretty much the only ride left at Six Flags Great America where as an operator you can run the ride, you can do some manual functions, like jogging the lift. Uh, that's where the lift panel is on loggers. And so this is what I was talking about, to get to, sh get to uh, shoots and second lift. You walk out that way and so if you climb up the stairs the way you get to shoots is you literally just walk along this pathway on the outside of the chute or on the trough till you get over here and one thing i really disliked about this ride is the a phones were attached to this loud 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 buzzer it was louder than the horns used to, when the ride started up so you'd just be sitting there you know peacefully watching these boats go by and then and it would scare me every single time. And I dreaded having phone calls because I knew that it would scare me because it was so loud. It was very startling. I get that it has to be loud because the ride is loud, but it doesn't need to be uh, deafeningly loud. Uh, another fun story is one time they were cleaning out this pool. And so they threw a clipper boat in here and they just ro rode it around with an oar to clean that up. Because they are fully functional boats. I always wanted to take a, a boat on a nice little rowboat action through here. And uh, so another one of your jobs up here at shoots was you would just watch people, see if they misbehaved. And if they're standing or something, they wouldn't sit down, you press the right stop, you call down at the station, tell them what's up. Uh, so some, uh, another one of those Six Flags policies. So the computer, going back to the panel. Hello. Going back to the panel. So the maintenance enable, how I talked about how you had to use those three buttons to start it. If you pop that up, you could just start it with this one. But you weren't really supposed to do that. Uh, because the people up top kind of had things they had to look for before the ride started. Make sure everything was clear. And uh, so you could start the ride in automatic with uh, no maintenance functions up and so uh, you could do it with those three people but you weren't allowed to why that is I don't know so it's like things like someone was standing you press the ride stop now the ride stopped well now you gotta wait 15 minutes for someone to come out and push this button instead of where uh, you know you could just stop it call security wait a minute and then start it up back again so that by the time security got there, uh, the guests would be entering the station. And you can see this is the old clipper line. It used to kind of be over, uh, used to be over where V2 is now. Uh, V2's, this thing right here, this bridge, this is called the wharf. And this is V2's, part of V2's queue now. This is the overflow queue. And this used to be for clipper. Because the entrance of the ride used to be right here. Uh, but then when they built V2, they built this little path over here. And it's uh, crumpling. Uh, Logger's overflow queue is right here. We really never used this, though, because... I mean, if the whole queue house was full, the ride is not as high capacity as it used to be. Like, back when it first opened and they had all the boats on, yeah, you could fill this thing all up and get people on in 30 minutes. But you fill this thing up with 20 boats on, you don't want to really open this up because then people are in the sun. And then they're waiting like an hour and a half to get on the ride. And no ride in the world is worth waiting an hour and a half. Especially if you've ridden it before. And this is more for the pump room.
just the lower level of it. But yeah, I think that is all I've got. Uh, every time I make one of these videos, after I'm done and I upload it, I think of more things. So I'm probably going to have to do a uh, follow-up on a couple of these rides. Including this one, I'm sure there's something I forgot. Also, I was uh, adding boats while, uh, in this video, I was adding boats while maintenance was doing their checks. And part of their checks is you test all the stops. So you start and stop it about three times when you're turning it on in the morning. And so, uh, even though the lift was stopped, I knew they'd be turning it on in a couple seconds. So I threw that one on. Uh, there's a life vest on this one because it's out of service. And you can see that was them starting it, and then he probably told the shoots person, test your right stop. They stopped it. And then you restart it again. And, uh... That's pretty much it. Uh, when you get there in the morning, the way it works, because uh, they don't open with the park. It changes every year. But let's just say Loggers opens at t at 11 and Clipper opens at 12. I think now it's like noon and 2 p.m. It's very sad. Uh, but you get there in the morning. Uh, you walk around the perimeter of the ride. Check the trough. Make sure there's nothing in it. And there's a couple gates you have to check. Like there's one right here. Mostly leading into the picnic grove. You got to make sure that those are locked so people don't walk into the right area. There's not really any uh, like danger zones here, like low areas of the ride because it's it's in the trough. So to get hit by a, a log, you kind of have to be putting your head into the trough or standing in the trough, something like that. So uh, once you walk all around, you come back, you'd call the maintenance space and you say we're ready for maintenance. They'd come out. You'd send uh, someone to the top. You'd send people up top, they'd come out, turn on the pumps, and once the pumps are going, then you would test, they would start it up, you would test all the ride stops, so this one, you test the turntable stop too, and then you'd test the uh, ride stop, this one. You wouldn't test first lift, for whatever reason, and then you would have to test uh, this one and this one, and those are the two up at the top. And I don't remember what this button is. Because these are the open the gates. Oh, that's the right start. And these are just indicator lights. Automatic mode, manual mode. Uh, control power. Cool. Alright, see you in the next one.